Okay guys, so today's Monday, July 27th, and I've been asked to do um, a comparison of Windows Mobile devices and Android devices um, from some people on YouTube, so here we go, we're going to get started. Uh, what I'm going to use today kind of as a demonstration is this Blackjack 2, which is running, I think, Windows Mobile um, 6, and I'm using my own um, T-Mobile G1 here to demonstrate the Android phone. Um, so to get started, from what I've read and from what I've experienced, with the full disclosure at the beginning, I have never really owned um, Windows Mobile device. This is actually my sister's old one, but I have used it various times, so I can I have kind of formed an opinion about it. Um, but to get started, um, a lot of people complain about um, the restart um, problems of. Windows Mobile devices that if it gets too overloaded, it'll automatically restart, or you have to reset your phone yourself every few days so that it'll um, won't be as slow or sluggish. And the memory on devices like these. Also, people complain about the fact that the um, non-touchscreen phones like this one on Windows Mobile are great and very responsive, while the ones that are touchscreen, um, such as I think the Omnia itself, um, tend to be slow and not responsive and a lot less cooperative. Uh, on, on the plus side, uh, when people talk about the Android phones, um, they have more memory. Um, there have been cases that I've read that you can install more than 50 apps on it and you've never had to do a restart or a soft reset. It'll always keep its um, speed. And so in the form of stability, um, the Android phones win compared to those mobile phones. Um, just because of that. In other stuff, we can talk about let's see, multimedia and stuff. In this aspect, it's kind of a tie because neither phone is a multimedia powerhouse, if you will. Um, like, let's say, an iPhone that is completely media friendly with their videos and things like that. And recently, it got its video capture qualities. Um, Windows mobile phones, they do have, you know, they have their, you most likely have cameras, they have video recording. Um, but the thing is that it relies on Windows Media Player, which isn't exactly the most user-friendly option to use. Uh, Android, on the other hand, didn't come with um, video capture capabilities in the beginning, but they got it over a software update, which everybody has now. So you can record video, take pictures. Uh, the video actually does look uh, really good. It's on, I think, a 3 megapixel camera on the G1 itself. Um, and because of this, the fact that, I mean, it does, they both equally portray videos and pictures quite well. I think that the Android phone wins, not because I'm sort of biased, but just because according to the video quality that I've experienced watching videos on both phones, I believe that the Android phone has better quality. Uh, so I guess that's a little tie on that. Um, and more so in phone performance, um... It also, you know, like I said, it varies from device to device. Um, the thing, however, where the Android phone prevails over the Windows Mobile phone is in the fact of notifications. When Windows Mobile phones, you just have the little bar on top. Uh, let me see if I can demonstrate it for you. Uh, right around here, where you have the little vibrate option and the reception, that tells you, oh, you have a text message or you have an email, but you can't necessarily go anywhere from there. You have to go to the actual app itself. And it might not be up here on the quick launch bar because that bar only shows the um, applications that you've recently opened. So if you have an email and you haven't opened your email app, you, you have to go to the menu and search for it. While on the G1 here, let's see if I can show you, uh, you go up here in the notification pane and you bring it down and you get all your messages there and with one simple click you can easily um, access all of your messages or any notification that you might have, a tweet or a message on Facebook, on MySpace, anything that you might have open. So that's where I think that the integration of all the notifications is better on the Android phone than on the Windows mobile phone. But they will have their shortcomings. Um, in software and third-party applications, this is another place where an Android phone knocks the Windows mobile phone out of the water. Just because they have an app store and the Windows mobile doesn't have one yet. For example, um, however, you can find applications online if you search for it that you can buy for Windows mobile phones. But you have to download it and then you have to install it. And sometimes it'll be a hassle to install it on, on Windows mobile phones because maybe you don't have enough memory or you don't have a memory card and you don't know that. While on 
um, Android phones, they have an app store that you can buy things directly from that store and it goes right on your phone. So you don't have to worry about memory issues because if you do have low memory, it'll tell you right off the bat. And plus you have a lot of free apps, like you have Shops app, you have Shazam, you have Twitter apps, apps like Twitteroid, um, Twitter Ride, you have Facebook apps, um, which are not really made by Facebook, but that people make them for the Android phone, which are great. Um, so in that aspect, this uh, the Android phone is better in third-party integration and software. Um, and, and for business people, of course, you need enterprise support and exchange support. Um, in that aspect, they're kind of right now tied, but um, because of Windows Mobile's high, higher security standards and closed system, um, they're a little better. I mean, um, the G1 didn't come out right off the bat with Exchange support, but now with the new MyTouch 3G coming out, it comes with Exchange support built in, so that's not really an issue. But um, really, if you're going to get a phone for business for Exchange support, you might as well just get a BlackBerry because they're basically made for the business user. And then finally, um, there's the displays. Uh, well, for those of you that have touchscreen Windows Mobile phones, um, since Windows Mobile devices are um, resistive displays and Android devices are capacitive displays, there's a little bit of a difference. Um, the iPhone's display is capacitive, so you'll have that kind of iPhone-esque features. While the um, resistive displays are a little different, um, and I don't think they're seen as much if they're not on Windows Mobile device. Uh, the winner in this round, however, is the capacitors, uh, such as in the iPhone and the G1, just because of the hardware, because it is dependent upon the hardware that you have, but they seem to be more um, user-friendly in that aspect. Um, and then, almost done, we have wireless capabilities, uh, which Windows Mobile wins now due to the fact, because they both have GPS, Wi-Fi, 3G, um, Bluetooth, but um, the Bluetooth on the Android phones right now is a little constricted because you don't have A2DP streaming or stereo headset. Well, I'm sorry, um, sharing. You can't send things through Bluetooth yet, but in future updates, that'll change. However, on the Windows mobile phones, it comes pre-built, so um, it's right off the bat. So this round does go to Windows mobile just because um, the Android phone doesn't have it yet. And then we have security. Um, and security, of course, goes to Windows Mobile just because for Android phones, um, it's an open system. It automatically updates all of your stuff, uh, connects to Google servers for your contacts, your Gmail, um, constantly saves everything. So in that round, um, Windows Mobile wins due to their closed security system. And then finally, the hardware form factors. Obviously, Windows Mobile does win in this category because Windows Mobile is like on almost every handset. Well, Android only has about two that are officially released now in the U.S. and another one in the U.K., the Hero, which might or might not reach it, make it to the U.S. So in this category, um, Windows Mobile wins because it's on the Blackjack, such as this one. You have it on the HTC Touch, the Xperia, the Touch Pro, um, so a bunch of other devices. So in conclusion, each, um, the, each operating system has its own plus and minuses. I tend to prefer the Android operating system just because I'm a little biased and um, I find it more user friendly and a lot less sluggish than Windows Mobile phones, but that's just me. For you, I'd recommend you go and try it out at stores. Well, obviously, just the two mobile stores since they're the only ones that have Android phones right, right now. But you can go there, uh, try out the Android phones, try out any Windows Mobile phone uh, with the knowledge that the touchscreen ones will be less capacitive. So that's it. If you have uh, make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and if you have any other requests of any videos that you want me to do, just leave a comment below. Thanks.